My friends, my friends, that's a little red hot chili peppers to get us started off on these week 17 matchup preview show. 17 weeks, you sorry sons of guns have had to look at this mug. I'm sorry, the only person I feel more sorry for is Heather Thrills having to look at it at 365 every damn day. So, um, 17 weeks, we have played 16 weeks, we have started to see a little separation between playoff teams and the playoff non-teams, some I call them consolations, some I call them scrubs, some I call them shitbags, I don't really care what you call them, but they're the ones that are uh, in some trouble real, real soon, if not already. And uh, we've got six, seven other teams right now that are just vying to get those coveted six playoff spots. So, uh, I really like the tightness we've seen right now uh, in our league of uh, best friends, if you will, Alexander Frederick Harbour. So uh, last week, uh, yours truly went three and three in his predictions. And as I discussed last week, uh, no longer be going head to head with uh, Dr. Kananga, a.k.a. Benson Harbour. We decided to just toss it out the window until next year. No sense to start arbitrarily in the middle of the year. Uh, did go three and three, like I said, had some good picks, had some poor picks. Unfortunately, myself picked myself to win, and uh, that backfired on me, uh, one hundred percent. So, on un momento. Lads, we're back. Sorry about that delay right there. Had to go inside and retrieve a uh, piece of uh, paraphernalia for this week's matchup show. Um, so. Uh, thankfully, last week is over. It's the longest match of the year. Two full weeks looking at that same damn team over and over again. I got tired of seeing Wakanda. Unfortunately, it was Big Ant, and everybody knows we're all tired of looking at Big Ant. All-Star game was great. Home run derby was great. Alex Bregman bringing home the MVP. I got to like that. Um, but the big thing about last week is thank God it's over. Whew. Man, it wouldn't matter if I won or lost. I'm over that. Um, so, we're moving on to week 17. Let's go ahead, let's pay tribute real quick before we get into it to uh, Braves great Matt Whistler. This might be the last time I wear this as he was uh, traded for Adam Duvall along with uh, Preston Tucker and Lucas Sims. So some young Braves pitchers who we thought were going to be great, um, or at least good, kind of already shipped off for a 30-year-old outfielder with uh, 240 batting average with pop and some good defense. I like that. Um, share a quick story with you real quick. I purchased this jersey two summers ago on a tour of Turner Field when the Braves had wrapped up or were in the midst of their final season there. And I really thought Matt Whistler was going to uh, turn into a, a stead, steady hand for that rotation for years to come. And boy, did that ever backfire on me. So this was a $30 investment that's now pure novelty. It's on the likes of uh, Troy Gloss and uh, Garrett Anderson style Braves jerseys. All right, so enough of the uh, personal stories. Let's move into the matchup portion of the show. First match I want to talk about. I want to talk about Pup. I want to talk about Al Vila because this one is a no-brainer. This one, let's go ahead and get this out of the way right now. It really doesn't matter what Cody does this week. He could hit 25 home runs. He could have an ERA of 572. He could bat 214, 314. He's going to win. There's nothing that Al Vila can do right now that's going to produce a victory. And that's nothing personal against Alavila. He just has a, a stank, a stench, a stigmatism, a, whatever you want to call it with that alliteration. Uh, he's, he's unlucky. He hasn't won since I was in my early 30s. Now I'm in my mid-30s. He hasn't won since the fish that William caught that he tweeted us and showed us a picture of was a mere minnow. So think about that for a second. Alavila, you've played hard. You have great tenacity. Your team can't pull out a dub if it, if the world depended on it right now. You got you know Suarez leading the world in RBIs, doesn't matter. Game winning home runs, don't matter. Uh, you can have your rotation throw a two eight nine eight, doesn't matter. Okay, Cody, I like what you got going on right now. You're kind of flying under the radar right now. You're not talking a lot. You're just kind of you haven't made a lot of deals recently. I can't actually recall the last trade you were involved in personally. Uh, you kind of hung back and kind of enjoyed your team as it is. And uh, it seems to be producing some W's for you. You've got, you're trying to get some separation in from long ballers. You'd really appreciate it. if he could pick up a loss this week. You're sitting at nine, six, and one while he's running your tail at eight and seven. So you've got to be cognizant of that. And uh, I think you're going to go to ten and six and one this week. I mean, it's it's a, it's a no-brainer for me. Pick up the pace. You're picking up a dub. Ten and six. Alavila, five and twelve. All right. 
So that's our first easy matchup. So I got five more that are kind of, th th they were a little hairier to determine who was going to win. So I'm going to go to one of my hairier ones, Strokeswood versus Longbow. You're probably like, why was that hairy? Strokeswood's been awful. Strokeswood's been awful, but he hasn't really played that bad. Last week, he had two week, two separate days where he was 14 for 31 and 15 for 29 or something crazy like that. So he has offensive capabilities right there. When you're batting over 500 two straight days, uh, or right at 500 for two days in a week, you should win. Unfortunately, he went up against the buzzsaw as a commission, Dr. Kananga, who's just on a <laughs> stroll down victory lane recently. Um, long ballers, though, he's got Chris Sale who is right now the best pitcher on the face of the earth. He can't be stopped. He can't. 62 innings pitch, 1-2 earned run, .23 ERA. It, it's craziness. He know, we, Obviously, he can't keep that pace up, but he's still going to come back to earth in what? Throw, two, eight innings, two earned runs? Oh, no. How will you ever live with that? Uh, Cookie Carrasco has come back and looked great. You've uh, you've got some things going on in the rotation here. Offense is something that is second is not to be messed with. I know you've tried to pump out some Jose Abreu trades and whatnot to try to make your first base a little bit better. Nobody's bit, um, but that th there's really no no part of your team where I'm like, well that that it's weak there because you're not. So you're eight and seven. You're you're like Cody. It's something about that division. Beegering does all the talking for that division. So therefore, the other two guys they can just throw in their bits here and there and uh, pay attention to their team. So I think uh, Long Ballers is going to be paying attention to a victory this week going to 10 and 9 and 7, excuse me. Nine, it's 10 and 7, 10 and 7, 10 and 7. I can't even read my damn handwriting over here. 10 and 7. All right. Uh, next matchup. We're going to talk about a little T-ball. We're going to talk about a little Chuck Nasty. All right, Chuck Nasty, he has been a team that was on just a roll recently. And while I talk, we're going to listen to some more tunage. Someone out there is killing puppets. About Muppets. I, I love the Muppet murder mystery. I wanted to play that for a second. I uh, just got to show it's It's, it's like uh, Kermit the Frog and crew uh, plus the departed equals awesome. Um, but Chuck Nasty was on a roll and uh, kind of came to a halt last week. Los Mexis just threw up some numbers on him that were crazy. Um, but other than that, I mean, his his pitching has actually done something to benefit him, and his hitting is is really, really one of the better offenses you'll see in the league. Paul Goldschmidt, A.J. Pollock, some dude named Mookie, Mookie Blayla. No, that was a point guard for the Hawks. Mookie, oh, yeah, Mookie Betts, maybe the second greatest player on planet Earth right now, third best. You know him, Trout, J Jose Ramirez, Josie Ramirez, uh, all those guys pick and choose. Pick your poison right there with those awesome dudes. T-Ball, he's out there blasting some dinger, dingles um, as he's uh, playing softball out there, four, four, picking up some sweet baseball bats. So he's dominating in the real baseball realm while getting dominated in the fantasy baseball realm. But rocking and rolling, appreciate the uh, the pictures of the gloves and the cleats. I'm a big shoe guy, so appreciate that wholeheartedly. You know those are slick. Um, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Just keep 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 doing great on the baseball diamond yourself, my buddy. Keep us updated on what's going on all I think you're in uh, Uganda, um, Cambodia. No, Canada. That's it, Canada. And uh, but uh, you're gonna pick up a loss this week against Chuck Nasty. Chuck Nasty's team is too good to to not pick up another dub. He's going to nine and eight. You're going to four and thirteen, and uh, potentially having the first choice of who to select next year in the auction draft. So uh, we appreciate that. So T-ball picking up a loss, four and thirteen. Chuck Nasty picking up a dub, going to nine and eight. All right, next up. I'm in had to put a little musical interlude there for you uh, as I talked about Wakanda versus Charlie's Angels. Gainesville Steve posted amusing today. Is he going to make some deals down the stretch? Looking to wheel and deal. Hashtag it. Uh, Wakanda, a team who has just been the hottest team in the league right now. Uh, beat, beat the hottest team in the league coming into last week in Trader Will. And uh, it's only loss recently has been to the best team in the league in the commission, if I'm not mistaken. So Wakanda, you're playing great. Charlie's Angels leading his division by two games over Los Mexis by 55 and a half games over T-Ball. So he's got the playoffs in his sight right now. With five weeks to go, two-game lead, it's going to be real tough to blow that. And... Uh, it doesn't matter, though. Charlie, you're kind of on cruise control right now. As you said, you're looking for some players. you got Castellanos rocking and rolling. You do have Jose Ramirez on your team. Anytime you possess that kind of guy, you 
hey man, he's gonna hit you three or four dingers each week and knock in at least four runs. So that's some production that they can't be matched. So you gotta love having that. Uh, it's not gonna matter though. Wakanda has something brewing right now. Uh, I really think we're looking at a potential rematch between Kananga and Wakanda um, for a uh, potential championship. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb right now and say Wakanda and Kananga. Those that's that a thing going on. They might be some teams in the uh, potential Super Bowl. Is that the right sport we're here playing? Super Bowl? Oh, excuse me. World Series. So, Wakanda, I think you're picking them another dub. You're going to 11-6. and six. Uh, Charlie's Angels, you're going to 9-8. and eight. You're still going to be in the lead in your division. You'll know in a minute here if it's going to be still by one game or by two games. So, 9-8 and eight versus 11-6. and six. And uh, Wakanda is really hoping that the uh, league leader, Benson, can pick up a loss soon so he has a chance to get that regular season title. Now, let's, that's going to lead us right into our next matchup here when we've got Kananga versus the B. Ryan Express. All right? The B. Ryan Express. This is Ben's team. Right now, he's just cruising. He is just, just rolling down victory lane every week, and it's fucking frustrating to everyone. Offense, killing it. Pitching, killing it. We're tired of reading about it, but it doesn't matter because right now, Ben can't stop. He can't stop picking up the dubs. He can't stop picking up the dubs. Ooh, copyright infringement almost occurred. Uh, can't stop picking up the dubs. Bigger and can't stop running his mouth and sneaking in last second victories against the aforementioned Alavila. Uh, B-Ryan's got Justin Verlander carrying his rotation and some other fill-in pickup pieces I wouldn't even know. An offense that is... God, B Green, when I look at that offense, I don't even know what to say about your team sometimes. I mean, I know I've got a decent offense, but looking at your squad, I'm just like, man, I can't think of like two players on that team I'd like to acquire. So you need to do some wheeling and dealing before this trade deadline occurs. That's a piece of advice from me to you. Uh, the sooner you make it, the better. It's not going to matter this week. Kananga's going to mow you over. He's going to probably win 13 to 4, 14 to 4, 15 to 5. If you keep it within five points on next week's show, I'm gonna uh, 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 I'm gonna eat like a pepper or something. We all know how I get with spicy food. I just look at it and I sweat. I'll bust a jalapeno pepper out here, eat it, and you guys will just see me sweat and fuck my mouth torched for the duration of our uh, show here. So Kananga, you're picking up a dub this week against B Ryan. I'm not even gonna talk about your team anymore. I've already hyped it and blown it enough. That's gonna do it for now. Last matchup of the week here. We've already talked about Chuck Nasty. We talked about Longbox. Talked about Wakanda. Pup. Kananga. We're talking about it now. Yours truly. Trader Will versus the one and only Los Mexis. In honor of Los Mexis and Trader Will this week, I'm going to be docking my luchador mask, Florida Gator style. It's authentic. I bought it in Mexico. That's how I know it's real. Mexis, your team was awesome last week. Reese Hoskins dominated. John Carlo dominated. You've got players on your team that are doing great right now. That Chris Bryant trade that you were bumming about didn't even really hurt you because you traded him for Aaron Judge. He wound up getting hurt anyway, so uh, Bryant just resting his shoulder is going to be better than Aaron Judge having a janky wrist for the rest of the season. You're going up against a team that had been super hot in Trader Will. Uh, he got just, it was, the 11 and 9 was a closer facsimile than it really was because it could have been 13 to 7. It could have been much worse. The offensive production from Anthony's squad last week was dreary. If you look at the numbers, uh, Trader Will would have only defeated two other teams offensively. And uh, with a pitching staff that only registers about 21.1 innings a week, it's going to be tough to win if you only do that. Um, but I don't see that happening this week. I think Trader Will's going to make a bounce back. I think some of those players that really slumped are going to turn it around this week. Alex Bregman can't continue to be this bad. And uh, Jose Altuve, even though he's on the DL, has a viable replacement in Jerickson Profar. And as you look at Los Mexi's squad, I see him just with Arietta. Strasburg's back on the DL. He does have does have Chris Archer of who knows who he's going to be playing for soon. And uh, the pickup of Juan Soto this week, I was really, and by this week I mean earlier today, I was really depressed about. Also, he does have Starling Marte because Benson dropped him. <laughs> That's what we've come to in this league, Drop it, laughing about Benson players that he dropped rather than anybody that we've actually acquired. Uh, Los Mexis, Clayton Kershaw can't help you this week, I hope. Brad Ziggler can't help you this week. 
Jameson Tyon can't have it this week because I think Trader Will is going to pull out a dub. He's got to keep pace in his division. He's got to keep pace with long bars if he's going to be one of those top six teams. And uh, speaking from almost like I, I know the guy, I got to say, he's going to 10-7. and 7. I hope he doesn't lose against you. You're going to fall to 7-10. and 10. But Gainesville Steve lost this week, so you're not going to lose any ground in your division, my friend. Uh, that's 10-7 and 7 for Trader Will, 7-10 and 10 for his uh, evil counterpart William there. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for the pick portion, 15 and a half minutes deep into this video, boys. So I'm uh, sorry about that. But we got Trader Will, Kananga, Pup, Wakanda, Longballers, and Chuck Nasty picking up a dub this week. Now, there's not going to be a top five this week because we have another mailbag going in. After first week's rounding success of just emails, I was flooded this week with even more by the dozens and hundreds and many um i gotta say I, I can only find the best three we're gonna break them down real quick hopefully wrap it up before the 20 minute mark boys all right so my first one comes from james in la he said is, is strokes it about to be the first team in your league to ever go from three and oh first place to open the season to a last place finish worst overall team at season's end um james i don't see that happening uh strokes what has a pr decent enough team to pick up a dub here and there down the stretch. There's no way he falls below uh, Strokeswood. There's no way that he, I mean, excuse me, there's no way Strokeswood falls below Alavila. There's no way he falls below T-Ball. So uh, I don't think he's going to be the first team to go from first to last. Uh, he is going to be, uh, unfortunately, a team that's going to start the season 3-0 in first place with a team that looks really solid to a team that mm, is not going to make the playoffs. I'm going to go ahead and say that now because falling to 6-10 uh, and ten stroke, I don't see him making the playoffs. All right, uh, next question. So, James, hope that answers you up there, buddy. Uh, Connie from Chicago writes in, uh, is Big Ant ever going to publish anything, something? You know, I hear, I, I hear this Big Ant fellow um, always running his mouth, yapping some gums. Man, them loops, man, them loops be running, and uh, nothing's coming out of him of any importance. So, uh, Connie, I don't think it's coming. We hear this, we hear that, we hear this, we hear excuse after excuse after excuse. And uh, unfortunately, Big Ant, I don't see it happening. Connie, uh, go ahead and don't hold your breath on that one. Go ahead and don't have a uh, hunger strike until that happens. Because Big Ant ain't doing big anything. Alright, and our last message comes from... Sh Ooh, I'm not sure how to say this. Shana, Sinead from Bangladesh. So we have now gone international here, gentlemen. Um, will Tim Savdog Savage uh, catch a brain and get another dub this year? Um, Sinead, uh, no. Savdog is not getting another dub this year. He will finish the season 5-17. and 17, Hapless, helpless, hovering at the bottom of the league. Uh, Savdog, uh, is a can right now to compare him to a pair of, uh, busted up kicks. He's just a pair of white sneakers that are beaten down, busted up, and they can't catch a break right now. He's, they're the sneakers that you mow the lawn in, alright? They were once nice, alright? He was once a team that was 2-0 or 2-1. He's now a team that's going to be 5-17 and to finish the year. Uh, so Sav Dogs, Tim Sav, Sav Dog Savage is not going to pick up another dub this year, uh, Miss Bangladesh, and uh, he's going to be 5-17. and 17. He might finish last. I think T-Ball is going to catch him. T-Ball, you're going to get another dub, buddy. You're, gonna, you're not going to finish last. Sav Dog's going to finish last. All right, so that's going to do it for our show this week. I appreciate you guys watching the Week 17 Matchup Preview Show. Uh, plenty of fantasy baseball insight and information for your everyday life. Mailbag questions, keep them flowing, keep the comments coming. And uh, until next week, when we probably eliminate another team from playoff contention, that's going to wrap it up. Take it easy.